We see a lot of Dutch-built steel boats on motorboat and yachting, but it's very rare to see a British-built one. And I thought I would take the opportunity to show you this. This is the Piper 12C. Now, Piper are best known for building big steel barges, liverboard barges, but they've now started producing this rather elegant, handsome riverboat. Now, prices for this start at £360,000, including VAT, but it's a really solid steel boat. So it has 8mm thick steel hull, 6mm thick superstructure, and it's very decent size too. So it's 13 and a half foot wide, it is 40 foot long, and it weighs, I can't remember exactly what it weighs, but it's, I think it's certainly over 10 tonnes. We might see if we can check that. Now it is category C in the standard format, but it can be made a category B cruiser. It's obviously capable of crossing the channel and getting over to France and Netherlands if you want to explore the inland waterways of Europe, but equally very popular on the Thames. But let's go on board and have a look. Small bathing platform at the stern, not really designed to carry tenders because most of the time it's going to be on the waterways. Really nice big cockpit area. It has a full length overhang over here so you can see if you want to put canopies around it, you can enclose this whole space. Big opening sunroof, that is an option in fact, but it just opens the whole thing up. Obviously, you don't particularly need to have it, but on a day like today, it's exactly what you want to have. You have a nice flow of fresh air, lovely view out around you, but equally, if you're going to be using it all year round, and you can on the rivers and so on, then you can enclose the whole thing with canopies, close up that sunroof, and you've got a very usable all year round boat. Bifold doors, either side of the entrance into the saloon. And one of the things you do notice is just the quality of the woodwork on board. Look at this, that's really beautifully done, solid. That looks like it might even be mahogany, actually. Most of the interior is oak, but that, the colour of that suggests it might be mahogany unless it's been stained. Now, this is, not a, this is an artificial teak deck, just makes it a bit more practical, easier to keep clean. Sensibly shaped dining table. It's not quite square, but rather cleverly, they've used it to actually store things in. So you've got bottle storage, down there, we've got more storage under there. Again, just proper craftsmanship. Look at that lovely little folding bracket support for the leaves so you can fold it down and have it more as sort of coffee table style if you're not eating there at the time. Got walk around decks, and here you can get a listen to that. It's all solid steel. Good high guardrails around the decks, plenty of depth to the gunnels too. It feels very nice and secure. And whilst we're here, it's worth noting that it has quite a substantial amount of solar panels inset into the roof. And that is because this is actually a hybrid powered boat. So it has both diesel motor and a built-in electric motor. So you can choose which power source you're using. And that makes perfect sense on a riverboat like this that doesn't need tremendous amount of performance, but being able to cruise silently under electric power is ideal. And of course, there's plenty of places to plug in too. So it's never going to be an issue in terms of range. You've always got the diesel to rely on, but then you've got silent cruising when you want it too. Now it is capable of sea passages. So it has got an anchor locker too, electric windlass, and even that solid steel. I can't tell you, when I first tried to lift that up, I couldn't quite believe how heavy it was because I was expecting it to be GIP, GRP like they usually are, but obviously everything on board this, heavyweight steel. Immensely robust, it means you do end up taking a few knocks and scrapes on rivers when you're moving through locks and so on, so having a heavyweight solid steel boat makes a lot of sense. Now there's a side access door to the helm station, but let's go inside and see it from inside. 
Now, with those bifold doors, you get a lovely big entranceway. They tuck right up against the side, so they're not getting in the way at all. You have a full width entrance into it. Lots of windows all the way around. Light pouring in. Good size dinette too, so you've got the option of eating inside or outside. You can sit the full company, either inside or outside, or in this mode, where it, frankly, with the doors open, you feel like you might as well be outside. We've got a nice sofa over on this side, but what is worth knowing is that at the moment, on this layout, we've got the galley downstairs, but you can have that as the galley upstairs and then create another cabin down below. So we'll show you that in a minute. Bit of storage under that sofa. Lots more storage under this side. All the way around, you can see drawers. And again, that's good attention to detail. It would be so easy just to have access through the locker on top, but having drawers like that makes it so much easier to access. Table, got folding leaves on it. Little support for that. And then helm station here, very traditional. There's that side deck door. Really nice, particularly on the river when you're just poodling along. Most of the time you're going to want to keep that door open, get a nice flow of air through the door, be able to easily look over the side, see how close you are if you're coming into more. Very traditional ship's wheel, really large, beautifully done. Feels absolutely lovely on the hand. It's beautifully lacquered rim with stainless steel spokes. Traditional Moore style throttle. And because the whole hybrid setup is all made by the same company, you don't have to have two different sets of controls. This one Moore style lever is both for the diesel engine and the electric motor. So there's no faffing about having to switch to a different set of controls. You literally pull it back, switch off the diesel engine, put it into electric mode, and then you're back using the same throttle. Now, it is a single engine only, and obviously that isn't the easiest boat to berth with. So in order to counter that, we have a bow and stern thruster arrangement. But rather uniquely, I haven't seen this before, it's all done with joystick style control. So if you want to, you can do both front or bow and stern thrusters at once. You literally just push it over one way, and you move sideways, push it over this way, move the other way, whoop, it's, <laughs> it's activated, it's wearing away, I might just turn that off. But equally, if you just want to use the bow or just the stern thrusters, you just push it forward and then left or right. So very clever, very intuitive. You've got it all just on the one lever there. Now, as well as being a dinette layout like this, we've got all the seating open here. This seat actually flips over. Hopefully I can do that one-handed. If I just lift that up and push, that clicks into place, and then you've got a forward-facing navigator's bench over on this side. Very simple, very sturdy, stainless steel supports, a little bit more storage. I do like the way they've really worked at making sure that all the space has been used to maximum effect. Now we've got an opening hatch overhead too, again just helps that flow of air through the boat. And then down into the galley, and like I said, so this is where the second cabin would be. If, if you have the galley up in the saloon, this then becomes a second guest cabin. But on this particular layout, they've just gone for the one cabin and a much bigger lower galley. And it is a really big galley space, actually. Everything you need, twin smeg induction hob, oven underneath, fridge over on this side, freezer up above. And it looks very much like a domestic galley. It's look, lots of swing out. Not quite sure. There they go, sort of swing out systems. It's all much like a country kitchen. Got a microwave built into the side. A bit more storage behind there. I think I can't seem to get that to slide open. Oh, there we go. Opening window up here, give a bit more ventilation more storage 
around the top. And this is all solid oak. Really good quality craftsmanship. Got access to the day heads here. This is also the ensuite bathroom for the forward cabin, but it's got Jack and Jill access, as we say. So you've got access direct from the cabin, but also from this galley area. Really good size bathroom again. Plenty of headroom, plenty of light. Good size separate shower compartment. All beautifully done in oak. Towel rails. And then if we come through into the cabin, and this is all, all right up in the bow, but there is plenty of beam here too. We're not trying to be a high performance boat that is piercing the wave, so it can be nice and beamy and full in the bow. And that enables you to get a full, there's no sort of tapering of the bed, that is a full, looks to me like a five foot wide bed. No tapering at all, so you can use standard fitted sheets. Lots of storage space, all on gas struts, so it's soft closed, soft open. Little television in the corner. Hatches overhead, more storage over on this side, hanging locker. Now that is technically the emergency <laughs> escape hatch that, so there's a little footrest there if you do need to clamber out through there. I wouldn't like to have to do that in a hurry, but it's always a requirement that you can get out without having to go back through the boat if you need to. There's that solid oak door again. And now let's have a little look under here and I'll show you why I want to do that. It's because there is an enormous amount of storage in here, but this is also where the batteries are stowed. And it has a 40 kilowatt battery bank, which will give four or five hours silent cruising in electric mode. But rather than using expensive lithium ion batteries, it just uses a huge bank of lead acid batteries. And that just makes it a lot more affordable. Weight isn't an issue on this boat. It's a very heavy boat anyway. You're not trying to plane with it. So it just makes it much more affordable, easy to maintain, but you do need a big chunk of batteries. But there is so much space down here. I can crawl in here. There is more than enough space for me in here. It almost feels like you could fit another cabin in here. In fact, I've definitely seen boats with smaller cabins under the cockpit than this. This is the inverter. I believe it's a seven kilowatt inverter. So Again, you don't have to plug in a lot of the time. You've got so much battery power on board that you can run all the electrics for several days. There is a Wallace diesel heater too, and lots more space just to chuck a whole load of your kit. And this being a boat show, they've taken full advantage of that and packed it out. But let's also go and have a look at the engine room. I'll lower those steps. And this is the access to the engine room. If I lift that up. Again, you've got gas struts supports to help with the weight of that. And drop down and we can see this hybrid motor. And it's a really neat piece of design. So here you can see the strength of that steel hull, all reinforced. But look at this, this engine, this is the 85 horsepower Nanny engine. But what's so clever about it is the electric motor is actually tucked in there between the gearbox and the engine block itself. You can just about see it. It's this silver colored circular disc shape in there. And it's all integrated into the engine. So it's a single, very neat package. You don't have to faff around with having a separate motor somehow spinning the shaft via a belt or some other means. It's all neatly integrated into one simple engine package. Now, with this motor, you should get a top speed of around about eight and a half knots at full whack using the diesel power. With the electric motor, you're probably only gonna get five, maybe six knots. But with four or five hours running hour on silent alone, that's as much as most people during the day, but you've still got a conventional diesel motor and a good sized tank for cruising if you need to. 
but look at how much spare space there is here too. Absolutely vast amount of space in the bilges and because it's a steel boat you don't need nearly so many reinforcing bulkheads so if you need to pack it out with more stowage there's plenty of room in there. Right, I was going to tell you how heavy it is and I see I've made a little note in my notebook. It is 16 and a half tons. So that is a very substantial boat. Let's finish up sitting here in this rather cozy saloon. I've been really impressed with this. It's lovely to see a British built steel boat offering something a bit different. It feels wonderfully light. There's some proper good British craftsmanship going on here. And it's the type of boat that is ideally suited to cruising on the Thames or through the waterways of Europe. And actually, not that expensive. Given the size and the quality and the sturdiness of it, it feels like you get a lot of boat for your money. So do please let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Always interested to hear what you have to say. My name is Hugo Andre. You've been watching Motorboat and Yachting. Thank you very much for your attention. And I look forward to bringing you more tours like this before too long. Thank you.